anything because I'm a class act. Oh, we all know I'm a class act. This is Tennessee or Giants Trade Talk. Power Bill, my big blue LLC. It's Friday night. Joe's got paid. We're in the swings and the thralls of training camp. We are also in the swings and the thralls of Giant fans either losing their collective minds or just just taking everything, not out of context, but just taking every little aspect of every little play, overanalyzing it, overthinking it, to, to the pendulum of both directions. To either Daniel Jones is the greatest quarterback ever, look at that throw, to Daniel Jones just threw a wiffle ball, to Drew Locke is going to be replacing the Daniel Jones, to the next play, Drew Locke really sucks. To this player went down with a minor injury, we're screwed. To this player, even though it's only been a few days, is the greatest player ever in Giant history. Ah. Uh, you know, everyone goes crazy about these injuries too this early in the season because of everything that's been going on with the Giants. Really. And I laugh a little bit because of the fact that you watch it and you look at it. And injuries, of course, are always scary, especially this early, because you never want to see anyone get hurt. You never want to see anyone uh, reach a, a point where they're not going to be able to play, especially if they're going to contribute. But when it, it looks like it's just a minor injury, and, and it's on the back page, it's on the front page, it's on every it's on every Twitter account, it's on every content creator account. It, it just drives you insane. That drives me crazy. <laughs> and, and I was thinking to myself, is this like it is? I mean, is this just the way football is now? And is this the way fan bases just are now? So I did a little research. <laughs> Well, this, this is going to be fun. I, I, I did a little, I did a little research. Um, and, and the reason I'm saying that I did a little research because we also have a new segment on the show called call stupidity out. So Andrew Austin, 64 59, he uh, posted a comment that basically said, just another OBB video, Tim, make it a video before he does any research. So I, I, I asked this idiot, well, what, what did I get wrong in the video? What, what was wrong? What was incorrect? What, what didn't I do my research about? And of course, there's silence in the sounds of silence. No response. You want to know why? Because he's a fucking idiot. Thank God this is the kinder, gentler Tim. Get him a body bag, Johnny! Yeah! So... I decided to do a a little bit of research to see, you know, about the pendulum swings of certain, you know, things and players and everything else. So I had the opportunity to, um, to go out to Eagles, see the Eagle camp the other day. Uh, yeah, not the other day. It was yesterday. Um, and and it was funny though, because I don't believe it was open to the, I don't believe it was completely open to the, uh, um, whatever it's called to the general public, but I just had an opportunity because, you know, I'm not going to get into everything that was going on, but I got an opportunity to go out for a couple hours just to, just to see everything, just to see what was going on, just, just to watch a little bit. And, um, you know, it, it's funny though, because, um, you, you see, you see other camps and this is why I always try to get a different perspective. And every play in Eagle camp wasn't life or death. Every play wasn't, wasn't, we're, you know, if someone dropped something, it wasn't the end of the world. If someone made a spectacular catch, they are going to be the, the greatest, you know, the greatest things in sliced bread. I, I will, um, I will say this. I thought it was funny. Uh, people like Paris Campbell looked pretty good. <laughs> and of course this is, this is early in camp, but it was just one of those things. And also I got the chance to talk to some Eagle fans outside of the camp. And it's weird because you, and maybe it's because of winning. Because winning always gives you a different perspective. But maybe it's because of the fact that they are perennial winners of late that every play is now. They, trust me, there is reactions and overreactions. But th- maybe it's because of the fact that they're winning that every play is not overanalyzed and overexamined. I even posted a play on Twitter of Daniel Jones. And I said, Daniel Jones in midseason form. Why? Because Mr. Jones went to, <laughs> went to throw a pass. He went to throw it to a running back and he looks like he just threw up a volleyball. And then a couple of plays later, he has a nice pass in the corner of the end zone. Actually, it wasn't really a nice pass. It was more of a nice catch by Malik neighbors who would literally had to turn contort and twist his body to come back for the ball. Um, but we're not going to talk about ball plays because Daniel Jones is the best ball placement out of anybody. But you can't get over. And then you see the drew lock play 
And people are already like, well, Drew Locke, he's going to be, he, he, look at that, he's going to be beating out Daniel Jones. Okay, it's been two days of camp, guys. And then I see story, and this is what, this is what really got me about the idiocy of Andrew Austin, 6459. There was an article I saw where Tyro Tracy is fighting for the starting job in the New York Giants backfield. Okay, so he's the fifth round rookie out of Purdue. Kind of a hybrid running back wide receiver. Only played running back last year at Purdue. Only, it was a wide receiver previously, the other previous three seasons. And last time he really played running back was all the way in high school. And he had, a, he, I believe he had, uh, I, I don't even, I don't even remember. I think he had something like an average over his time in school of only like 400 yards. And I think he had 15 total touchdowns. Now, the funny thing is he's 24 years old. So that was in five seasons. So all of a sudden he is going to come in. He is, the, he, he is receiving right now, Tyron Tracy, the Trey Hawkins award. Trey Hawkins, of course, was the, uh, was the cornerback that came in here with, uh, had a wonderful camp. Everyone looked at him and said, he is going to be a stud. It, we we got a steal. Well, then, you know, preseason started. Things didn't go well. <laughs> then he got into the regular season and things even got worse. And I kept trying to tell people, he looks great in shorts. He looks great in pads with the shorts on. He looks good against the cones, but there's a difference between actual and live competition. Yesterday, there was a pass uh, to Malik Neighbors where Malik Neighbors made a player just look silly. This looks silly. And then I checked the number and I said, oh, that's Trey Hawkins. <laughs> so, so does that mean Malik Neighbors is going to be spectacular, which we hope he is? Or does that just mean that Trey Hawkins just isn't good? I think the perception of winning, it's not even a perception. I think the ability to win allows the fan base to have a different perspective and perception of what they see. And I would love to have gotten a, gotten a perspective of the, the dynasty of the new England Patriots and get an idea. I, I know some Patriot fans uh, and, and they're hardcore fans. And I will tell you this, they're, they're pretty mellow about everything that went on when it, Tom Brady was there. But I was just curious if, you know, if you go back to like, uh, the earlier days when the Patriots pretty much sucked and to w how the fans reacted in training camp to how they, how they react to training camp during the Tom Brady eras, how they react in training camp to the Mac Jones eras, and how they react in training camp now under the Drake mayor. I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of curious about that because I remember going back up, going back up to Albany, going back to other places, the giants at training camp, especially in my youth, my younger days. And I remember not having this, this angst or, or this, this, um, and back in that day, all the practices were open practices, uh, but I don't, I don't remember having this angst in reference to having to see people play and have this worry that this is the greatest guy. This is a terrible guy. This is, this is, this, this is a lot of times you would say he's a training. You, you would tell, say people, he's a training camp warrior. And then sometimes those training camp warriors get into games and they just, you know, fold up it's it's the whole look like tarzan play like jane scenario i'm sorry that's probably not uh, dei <laughs> sorry about that we're trying to we're trying to include diversity equity inclusion here so i have to make sure we check on that um but that's what happened but there was not this 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 weirdness to the fact that you live and die on every play now is it more of social media is it more that now everyone has an opinion is it now that everyone is in their office with a microphone and a soundboard? Certain people will understand that. <laughs> Certain people, they won't. Um, but you got to you got to kind of think about it that way. And I think that's the perspective we need to look at as fans. You want to get hyped up, you want to get excited, but you know what? Talk to me on August 8th. Talk to me on August 17th. Talk to me August 24th. Talk to me at about 4:30. On, on and after September 8th. Then we'll have a better idea where we are ready to go. Because I love it. Daniel Jones is fully cleared to practice. Great. That's just, that's just fucking wunderbar. 
And I love it now because you also have people. I, I love these. I love these headlines. New York Giants training camp day two takeaway. Mad scientists tinkering with the offense. It's day two. <laughs> it's day two. There's not much tinkering going on here. I, I, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. It, it, it's just, it's just crazy. And then you got people going, well, Jones was nine for 13 on Thursday. He missed Devin Singletary. He threw a touchdown on deep ball of Jalen Hyatt. We're going to have to, we're going to have to hear this all through training camp. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be, Oh, I'm trying guys. <laughs> I'm sitting here with my black rifle coffee. People are like, why don't you live stream yesterday? Well, I was uh, undercoating the truck, so I didn't get a chance. My hands were full, full of black uh, goop. <laughs> cause when you have an older truck, you have to undercoat it. So for, we're going to, we're going to have man talk. Cause I think we need some man talk in this world. Uh, you know, when you have a truck and it's like a 2005 and you want to make, keep away the rust and keep away all the issues that you could have, you got to undercoat it, but you got to make sure you don't touch the shocks, the drive shaft, excuse me, the drive shaft or the brakes. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit of a process. Uh, and you literally have to go under the truck with your spray gun and sit there and go through. And then you have to do the inside panels of the truck itself. So it's, it's a, it's a long process. <laughs> that's the man talk of the day um but you know what guys let's see what happens i'm gonna be in training camp and i think next week i'm going to training camp so that should be fun i'll, t I'll, I'll figure out what days we're gonna be there uh we're not gonna be able to go to the first preseason game this year because of the fact that we are just gonna be away <laughs> so we're not gonna be able to do that but we am gonna go to the uh the final jets giants preseason game as always so make sure we hang out for that we'll have training camp reports when there's actually something to report I'm not going to sit there and just make shit up and be like, oh, I think the guy's going to be this. I'm, I, you know what my thing is? Here's my thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. I cannot give you a perspective on a player against guys that are going to be working at Home Depot. Sorry. I, I love it. I, I go back to the scene in uh, Major League Two when Willie Mays Hayes bulked up to hit home runs and Rube Baker watches a, Willie hit a home run in spring training. And he says to the manager, wow, Willie's got some power. And he looks at him and goes, yeah, against a guy that's going to be bagging groceries in two months. Um, so <laughs> just leave it at that. But we're going to have some fun this year. We're going to we're going to have a lot. We are going to have a lot of fun this year. So make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you get the notification bell because you want to know why. I don't know. See, that's, what you, that's what you're fucking supposed to say. And as always, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to ring that bell because you want to know why. That'd be awesome.